Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. How many is glad to be in God's house today? Amen. Let's stand to our feet today. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand. Let's get ready to worship with the choir. Amen. As they come forth. Hallelujah. Ain't God good on this Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah.
Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. I thank God. Come on, how many thank God today? I thank God. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you worship him today? Come on, somebody. As he picks you up and turns you around. Get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. the story of the prodigal son hallelujah where he, he went away hallelujah from the love of God he went away from his father but how many knows he found his way back home amen and when he found his way back home his father just opened his arms and said son welcome back hallelujah I know we have some of those stories in here today where God has just wrapped his loving arms around you hallelujah said welcome back my son Get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. presence of the Lord is in this place. Come on, let's just for a moment. Hallelujah. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we feel your presence in this place right now, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. Lord, if there's a lost soul, hallelujah, Lord, let them make their way home today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, feel your presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't want to break this spirit right now. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. I think we can take a little moment. I think we can take a little moment right now. Hallelujah. Let's just take a little moment for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's don't break this up right now. Hallelujah. We got other things we got planned. Hallelujah. But I feel the presence 
house of the Lord. Come on, can we see that? Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. So we're not dead, but we're alive through the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when things like this, we get a little bit, a bit uneasy because we don't know what's going on. Hallelujah. But that's when God begins to move. Hallelujah. I said, when we go out of the ordinary, that's when God begins to move. Hallelujah. That's when lives begin to change. Hallelujah. I don't have a schedule. It's just me and you, God. It's just me and you, God. I don't have a schedule. begin to do that right now. Let's thank him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep that zeal. Let's keep that worship. Hallelujah. We're going to worship some more here in a minute, but we're going to take up the offering at this time. Hallelujah. There's a few announcements I have to make. The uh, revival is coming up this Saturday. Don't be late. 7 o'clock. I'm sure they're going to have a pre-service prayer. Don't be late for revival. Amen. It's going to be Saturday at 7. And then we've got Sunday with a visiting minister. Catch the fire conference is what it's called. Hallelujah. How many knows we need to get that fire burning down in our soul again? Hallelujah. So come on. Don't be late. You should be sitting right here on the front row. Be ready for what God is going to do. Amen. We also got the Save the Children, the little cans that the children have been, take, uh, been uh, asking you for money to put in their cans. Those are due, I believe, coming up pretty soon. Uh, Sister Underwood and Brother Underwood know all about that information. Could get with them and uh, ask them when it's due. I think it's also scrolling on the board here. Hallelujah. But at this time, we're going to take up the offering. He said, give and ye shall receive. And that's all I'm going to say. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray, God, for this uh, offering today, that you would bless it, multiply it, let it overflow, let it go to the avenues of this church that it's supposed to go to. Lord, I pray, God, that you would take care of what needs to be taken care of. And you have so many times. There's none of us in this place that have left hungry. We're not left of uh, uh, sick, Lord. We know, God, that you will provide uh, to your children. Um, and, Lord, this is our moment and our time to give back unto your kingdom. And, Lord, we want to thank you in advance, God, for what you're going to do for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak
Hallelujah. Come on, let's just give that hand clap to the Lord all across this place. He's still moving. Come on, he's still moving. How many knows he's still moving? Oh, I said he's still moving. How about on this side of the church? Do you believe he's still moving? The Lord is still moving. Come on, how many believe it? Our Lord is still a healer. He's still a way maker. He's still a promise keeper. He's still a supplier. He is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. In our lives today. Hallelujah. I tell you what I want us to do. I feel this in the Holy Ghost right now. I want you to think of something that you really, really like to see happen in your life, whatever that need is. I don't have to prophesy. I believe everybody in this room has something that you've been praying about. You have an urgent situation that you've really been touching God to move and heal and give the miracle that needs to happen. You've been praying desperately about that. And if you have, and I know you have, this is what I want you to do. I want you to put it in your mind right now. Think about that one thing. And I want you to think about what you really like to see happen. You got it? You got it? Now what I want you to do is just shout Jesus. Ready? Jesus! At the name of Jesus it can happen. Jesus! Go ahead and believe it now. That you call on that name of Jesus that's above every name. It can happen today in the name of Jesus. I believe it to happen today in Jesus' name. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord one more time all across this place. What a great God we serve. I'm so thankful to be in the house of the Lord today. I like what I feel in the house of God. I think that's why, I I think, Sister Turner, I'm addicted to what I feel right now. I can't get enough of it. They say drugs, they say cocaine. Once you do it, you're addicted. It's the same thing with Jesus. Once I got a a sweet smell, aroma of Jesus Christ in my life, I just want more. I just want it again. I can't get enough of it. I want to be the first in line. You know what I'm saying? I want to be the first at prayer meeting. I want to be the last one to leave. I want to be there when everything's happening. I just can't get enough. I want more of Jesus. These, this choir, you guys done awesome. Let's give them a hand clap today. I want more of Jesus. More of Jesus. Thank you, choir. You can be dismissed to the seats if you like. But Jesus is my everything. He's my life. He's everything to me. And I'm just over amazed at what God has done for me in my lifetime. I can't testify enough, but I do know I'm overcomers by my testimony. And the more I thank God, the more greater things happen. So I'm just excited what God is doing. We've got a lot of things on the calendar. I want you to get, make sure you get a calendar off the desk. Uh, we also, if you haven't downloaded our church app, you need to put it, if you've got a smartphone, download that app. Because all you have to do is go to that phone and push events. And it'll tell you all the events that's coming up at our church. And, uh, and so that's, that's pretty uh, good on the app. And also it's a place to give, a place to read your Bible. And, and soon, Brother John Patton's going to be helping me get it set up to where we can watch all of our live stream from that app as well. Uh, waiting on to get that set through YouTube and all that good stuff's coming up. But uh, if you haven't downloaded that app, you ought to. It'll give you, you'll know everything the church has got going on. And you won't never have to say, I didn't know we was doing that. It'll be right there. We put the announcements on the board. But we do have a great thing. Next month, the men are having a wild game uh, eating thing going on. It's going to be fun. So look at those dates. Make sure you're there. We're going to have a great time in that. But most of all, we're going to worship God until then. Praise God. We're going to have church. Everybody ready to have church? Who's going to help me preach this morning? If you're not going to help me preach, you can be dismissed in Jesus' name. Praise God. I need everybody helping me today. We want to go to Numbers chapter 13. Turn your Bibles to this passage. It's a very familiar biblical account here in the Word of God today. And I want to turn to Numbers 13. And I'm going to go ahead and warn you, I'm going to have to sprint out the door right after church because I got some good news to happen in Arkansas here this afternoon. I'm getting to baptize my, my brother-in-law in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of his sins. And God's going to fill him with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. So I got to go take him to church tonight. We're going to get him baptized in Jesus' name. So if I, if I don't shake your hand, I'm going to warn you why. I'm having to head out right after church. And you may not see me right after church. But I do love you. Thank you for being here. It's good to see people coming back. I hadn't seen some of you since last year. 
Uh, so uh, it's good to have you back and get over that crud, that mess that's coming against us. But good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. And thank you for getting better and coming on back. And that's what it's about. I know we still have a small percentage of the church that has not came back yet. And still some things are lingering there in their lives. But God. Everybody say, but God. But God. He's still God. Amen. He is still God. Numbers chapter 13 and 17 says this, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein. Go check it out, he was telling them. Whether there be strong, whether there be weak, whether there be few, whether there be many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. And, and he, he was giving them instructions. This is what I want you to do. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or strongholds. And what is the land it is? What, what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. Or, and be ye of good courage. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, be of good courage. And he said, bring up the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. That's a good time to go. So they went up and searched the land and from the wilderness of Zin, and, and I probably won't pronounce all these names right, so you just laugh at me and move on, okay? But maybe of, the, of Zin and, and Rehob, or the men came to Hamath, and they ascended by the south and came to Hermron and Ahem and, and Sheshiah and Talamiah and children of Anak were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan and the Egypt. And they came into the brook of Echal, or Echal, and cut down from thence a branch with a, one cluster of grapes, and they bare it between two upon a staff, and they brought unto the pomegranates and the figs, and the place was called the brook of Echal, or Echal, however you want to say it, because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. Now, everybody lay your Bibles down behind you and help me pray today for God to lead. And God, in the name of Jesus, I thank this opportunity to carry your word today and, and preach what you have asked me to preach to this congregation. And I pray today, Lord, that you anoint your word, God. Not, it's not what I want to say, but it's what you want to say and how you want to deliver today, God. It's not what the professors have to say, but it's what God has to say. And God, I ask you to open my mouth and direct the word the way you want it to go today. And God, I will deliver if you would put it there. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. And the church said, Amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to preach today simple report. Uh, that I've preached probably before. I imagine I have as many years as I've been preaching, but I want to title today, Whose Report Will You Believe? Now, many of us know the passage that I just read and how it's taking place here at, in, in this, this text that we read today. We know it's where, where Moses was sending out the spies, and Moses told in the first verse of the chapter, he sent these men out to explore the land of Canaan. And he said, when you go out there, I want you to look around, and, and I want you to bring back a report and give us to the Israelites here. And so he sent one leader, and from each of the 12 ancestral tribes that were there, and he sent them out, and Moses uh, put them in order. And, he, and this is what I, I like about this. I thought about it. I said, you know, he sent them out, one from every tribe, because he wanted them to come back and tell their tribe what was going on, and this is the situation. So he sent them out because he, did, he, he really wanted to get 12 views of everything that was happening, so he sent them out there, and he sent them out by, by uh, 12 of them, and he sent out the spies to go into the promised land, and he said, I want you to do me a favor. When you go, I want you to bring back a report of what you have saw. I wonder today, thank you, men, come on up and help me preach. I wonder today if I sent out each section of the church today, and I said, I want you to go out into the towns and the cities, and I want you to come back with reports of what you see and what is happening going on. Now, I haven't done that yet, but because I don't have to, because I get reports from all of you every day, because I make the statement that I don't watch media, but y'all make sure I know what they said on media. So I get all these reports, and, but that's kind of what Moses was doing. You go out and get a report, and you bring it back, and let's see what you find. So, uh, what I want to do is continue reading of what the 12 spies brought back while you're sitting down now. Numbers chapter 13, same chapter, pick up verse number 25. And they returned from the searching of the land after 40 days. Everybody say, they lived with giants 40 days. Think about that. 
And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation, all the children of Israel, got them all together. They said, come on, we got something to tell y'all unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back the word unto them and said unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, we came unto the land where thou sentest us and surely, boy, they came back. Watch this report. And surely, everybody say surely. surely. It floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Look what we brought back. Hallelujah. Look at this. Woo, surely it is good. But nevertheless, you got to love those that are excited on Sunday and then you don't see them on Wednesday. Get baptized on Sunday and then you don't see them for two, two or three weeks. Because you know why a lot of times they have that nevertheless in their vocabulary. But nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. In other words, the giants were there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the, and the Amorites, somebody said all the Amites, dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and the coast of Jordan. And Caleb, he came together, and he says, Oh, wait a minute! He stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Here it goes again, another word that I really don't like. But the men went up with him and said, We not be able to go up against these people, for they're stronger than we are. Wake up, Caleb. Are you crazy? You're, are you blind? Are you, what is going on? Wake up, man. So they brought back an evil report in verse 32 of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people we saw in it are men of great stature. This is a big thing. This is a big deal. This thing, I don't know if we can do it or not. It's just crazy. And so verse 33, And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. This thing is bigger than us. Caleb, did you not see how big a thing that we're facing? We're facing a giant out here. I come today to tell the church I know that we're facing a giant in this generation we're in. I know that it's almost like I feel like I'm fighting all by myself sometimes, and I know you do too, and we feel like we're, we're trying to speak the word, and the more you speak the word of positive and faith, and God's on our side, and we're not going to fail, we're going to win this, this thing, we're going to have victory, the more it seems that the world is saying, I'm not sure if I believe that report anymore. But I want you to note in verse chapter, in verse 20 of that, that I read in the start of the text today, in verse 20 says, when Moses was, uh, was, was putting out orders for the spy out the land, it says that it was, he says, I want you to, uh, the, he said, I want you to know that the, the soil, I want to know when you come back, is it fertile or is it poor? I want to know even the, how the soil is. I want to know, are there many trees in that land? I want to know the best things. I want you to bring back samples of their crops that you see. And did, did you grab the ending of that verse 20 that we read in our text today? It happened to be the season that it was harvest time. And the, right, the, the Bible says, and the first ripe grapes were already out. It's amazing to me, and I, and I don't believe it was a coincidence that God was having these spies to go into a land to spy it out at the right time at the right season of the year to see the greatest things that they could find in that place. He didn't do it, and I don't think it was a midwinter time like it is right now where the trees were bare and there was no grapes being up uh, on the vines and everything was just naked in that country. I believe it was a time, he said, he, matter of fact, the word says he sent them in where the first fruits were just coming in. A time in the fruitfulness of the land here was, was when the vines were yielding their best, so much so that uh, the branches, even on a single cluster of grapes, it took a large, uh, two men taking a large rod to carry one cluster of gro uh, grapes between them. So was this just a coincidence that they ac actually went at that time of the year? No, it wasn't just a coincidence. Too many times we use the word luck and co coincidence too many times in our life. Woo, I sure was lucky. That car almost hit me. Woo, that's just a coincidence that I showed up at the right time. 
You know what? This is the way God works, and I'm going to try to say this without just giving you a good old shout right now. But, but you know what? My wife and I have been praying for her brother that, that somehow or another, this is her prayer and, and to me. And I'm thinking, yes, it can happen, but, you know, it's going to be almost next to impossible, but it can happen. She says when she found out her brother has stage 4 cancer that we're baptizing today in Jesus' name, she said, she told me this word. She says, we, gotta, we, got, to, we got to baptize him. That was her words, and it was like, okay, let's pray about it. But you know what? Before we had time to ask him to baptize him, their call came to us asking us to come and baptize him. You see, it looks like good fruits are hanging. I don't know what's going to take place, but I do know this. My God doesn't do anything by coincidence. I want to tell the church something right now. The last two years ain't just been a coincidence. God said, I need to turn this world upside down, and he did in a matter of a few days. And I come this morning to tell you, God's getting ready to turn your world upside down, sir. He's getting ready to turn your world upside down, ma'am. But I want to tell you, we better know that our God is still in control. Our God is still the great I am, and it's no coincidence. Absolutely not. God was sending the people to let them see the best land and what would yield to them. Once they crossed over into that land. Now, I want you to notice that key phrase there is once they crossed over and took that land. But most definitely, my, my friend, I believe God ha has, uh, or, or God could have went ahead of time before them. And God could have went in there and wiped out all of the, the enemy. And they could have went in there and took that city. And, and, and he could have wiped it empty for them when they went in there. They could have said, hey, the giants are already gone. I mean, they already, I mean we, we read that in text before where these four lepers men just started going to the city. And when they got there, everybody was gone because they heard an army coming. So God wiped them out before they even got there. So why didn't God do that? No, God chose in this time. And I truly believe that God expects us. Everybody say, that's me. God expects us to step out and move sometimes. Some of you are sitting in your spiritual home waiting on a spiritual paycheck to come to your house. But honey, sometimes we have to get out and we have to move. When it comes to taking our grounds back, comes to taking our joy back, I'm going to tell you the devil's done stole too much of my joy in the last two years. But you know what? I'm not going to go hide in a cave, David. I'm not going to go hide in my, under my juniper tree, Elijah. I'm not going to go hide somewhere and say, oh, poor is me. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go looking for my joy. Devil, you done took my joy. I'm coming back to get my joy. I want my shout back. I want my worship back. I want my word back. I want my church time back. I want my dedication back. I'm coming. Listen, if you and I want to occupy in the land that the enemy has taken from us uh, or is holding on to, my friend, if we want to take it back uh, we, and we want to see a true harvest uh, in that land, you know what we're going to have to do? We must first move to that next level. You don't want to miss next Sunday Sunday school lesson. It's going to be the panel. And, and I don't know who I'm going to have it on it yet, but we're going to be talking about the five-fold ministry and moving into the next five-fold ministry. You know what i got to have in my life, Brother Kayla Nance? i got to have a prophet in my life. Some of you are scared of prophets. Some of the prophets have went over the deep end and tried to make a show out of it. I understand all that. And that's what's hurting the good prophets. That's what's hurting. Well, even Jesus wouldn't have much honor in his own country if he walked in this morning because we just don't believe in certain directions in certain ways. But I've got to have a prophet in my life. I've got to have a teacher in my life. I'm going to tell you, all of you that don't come to Sunday school, you're missing something. You're missing teaching that you need in your life. That's okay. To say, oh, me, because you know it's the truth. You can't make it to heaven without teaching in your life. You've got to have teaching. Well, I feel like preaching right there right now, because I didn't see a lot of you in Sunday school this morning. Well, Brother Hunt, turn that page. Be nice. I'll see you next Sunday at 1030. How about that? we got to have the teaching. we got to have the, the, the teaching. we got to have the prophets. Uh, we got to have these uh, evangelists that we have come through here and preach the word. we got to have them. And, and I love evangelists, but they're not your pastor, so you got to have a pastor. Come on, you cannot be saved without a preacher. you gotta have, you got to have a preacher. 
But that's next Sunday. You don't want to miss 1030 Sunday School Panel is going to talk about how we can start seeing a demonstration of the fivefold ministry take place here at Carnival First Pentecostal Church. And I truly believe this. Uh, when we start seeing a demonstration of the fivefold ministry, you know what we're going to have? We're going to have the sick healed. Uh, we're going to have the lame walking out of this place. Uh, we're going to have blinded eyes open. Uh, we're going to have souls changed. Uh, lives begin to say, hey, uh, I know what i got to have, but it's got to go to work. It's got to work. I'm going to leave it there because that's for next Sunday. But God has called us to move to the next level. And we, got, we must move. God's report said he is faithful and he will go before us. But his, he expects us to take that next step. He expects us to move on. So God is intentionally, he shows the spies here the best of the best. He shows them the best that was going on. This is when you get in that land, you're going to see the best. And that land has to offer them. He said, you're going to see it. But during the most favorable time of the season to witness, that's what you're going to see. So and they looked at the report that the spies bring back. They show the nation of Israel the, the sample of all the fruit that they took. From the land, and they say out of their, their own mouths, the ten spies says, and they enter to a land that you sent us to explore, and we went in, and, and indeed, they said, it is, it is so bountiful country, it's so much going on, it's flowing, the Bible says, it says, and it's flowing with milk and honey. Could you imagine having all of this at your fingertips? Right here, is, it's all right here, but all you can see is marred and sin field on the earth. Could you imagine having the greatest thing in your spiritual life right at your fingertips? But let's bring it where we are living today. But all you can see is cold and sinus infections and, and heartaches and, and headaches and toe aches and financial problems and I can't get off of this and I can't get off of that and that's all you can see but church I can't see COVID today because all I can see is the land that's flowing with milk and honey and I know my God's preparing a place for me called heaven help me Lord the Bible says, eyes has not seen, nor ears heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which do God has prepared for him who loves him. We cannot even imagine what's waiting for us on the other side of this thin veil that's between us and heaven. Our eyes have, our, have only ever seen this corrupted, tainted world, marred world that we live in. And, and it seems like the more I turn my, my TV on, the more I see the marred sin and things that are happening so rapidly that, that it, it, it's just crazy. I, I heard somebody tell me yesterday, and I, well, I haven't studied to see how much it is, but I, this is going to blow your mind. It blew my mind that these two kids went to a local local school that's about 50 minutes from here, 50 minutes away from here, and said that they are now cats. Yeah, so they were a cat collar to school. And guess what the school had to do? The school had to put a litter box in the bathrooms for them to use. That's stupid. That's crazy. I don't know. I, I, I'm sure I'm going to ask the Board of Education because I know who's on the Board of Education of Tipton County, and I'm going to find out that she signed for it, and I'm going to rebuke her in the name of Jesus. Just kidding if you watch this video. But, but I, sometimes we, we live in a land that's losing its mind. But they think the church is crazy because they want to step up and say, hey, we want to have church. Hey, I'm a wood god apostolic tongue talking, holy roller, born again, believer in the liberated power in Jesus' name. They think we're crazy because we believe in one God. And, the, and guess what? Even the devil believes in one God and trembles. We're living in a time that people are crazy but you know what that thin veil that separates us is this you know here we are in this corrupted tainted world and 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 you know we have never really witnessed the splendor of God all we've ever heard is read about it and preached about it and talked about it and ain't it going to be good oh we had a few that died and went to heaven and and they saw the heavens, but they couldn't even describe it. You know, loved ones that has gone on before us are seeing it at first hand. We do realize that. And the, the, the true glory and the, blender, the splendor of the brilliant glory and the beauty that exists there, they see it. God's domain in his presence, they see all of that. But when you read the, the word about the throne room of being in God's presence, even John the Revelator, 
he really couldn't explain it like he wanted to, even though he was the one that was there because all he could use was the colors like a rainbow or jewels or, or and gold. He talked about the colors. You know, we, 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 we think we get there, we're going to see the streets of gold, but they didn't say they're going to be of gold. They said they're going to be as gold. It's, you, so we really don't know the, the, the greatness of really what it is, but things that are there must be truly beauty and splendor. The song I only can imagine is, is so probably so true in context that you and I can only imagine what heaven's going to be like. But I want to tell you today that I feel like you and I are not fighting as hard as we used to for heaven. Let me leave you out of it. Let me just put me in it. I feel like sometimes I don't fight as hard as I should for this place called heaven. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like, but I do know what it, compared to what I have here, it's going to be a sweet aroma. It's going to be a sweet place to be there. Paul even tells us in 1 Corinthians 13 and 9, for we know in part, just part of it. We don't even know a, a, a fraction of it. And we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is a part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also I am, I'm, I am known. So right now, church, just listen to me a minute today, but we are only seeing things dimly. We only are getting a, a blurred or unclear picture because of where we are today. And the things that blur our visions. You know, let's look, talk about the physical for a second. Some of our visions, I, I left my glasses in there, but I got big fun. I can see it. So I'm okay. But this is what I want to tell you. My, my vision is blurred now, but it's probably because of age, but it's probably because of things that I have allowed to come close to my eyes or things I have ate. And, but things are blurry in my life, and I can't see things like I once used to, so it's really good. And when I don't have my glasses on, because I can't see you frowning. I can't tell if your eyes are closed and you're asleep. I can't see all that. But, but though, something things are good not seen. But you know what? This is the thing. You and I have only scratched the surface of what heaven is really going to be like. And his splendor and his glory and his beauty is going to be such an awesome place to go to. But I want to get back to the account and the numbers here that we read today because I don't want you to think I read it and I'm not going to finish it. But I want us to focus on a report that the spies and all of them who believed brought back. And God is one of one who ordered the people, remember, to spy out the land, and he's the one that already promised them the land of Israel. He done said, you're going to take that land, right? Dude, he already done promised you're going to take it because he went and told Moses, you go get them. I'm going to take you to the promised land. Now keep that in mind, in the back of your mind, that God has already said that we're going to win. How many times do you and I preach, preachers, that's in the house? Uh, I read the back of the book, we win. I've already read the back of the book, we win. But yet still, we, we are like these spies sometimes. We come back and say, oh, woe is me. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I come today to remind you and encourage you. If you just stay in the ship, if you just stay in the church, we are going to win this thing. We are going to, be, we are going to see that place called heaven if we just stay in the church. But I want us to focus on this report, keeping it in mind. Like I said, the ten spies said to Moses and the people of Israel, they said that it was, in fact, the beautiful place that floweth with milk and honey. And they produced the evidence of a, of a, of a great land uh, uh, the, that everyone could only get a glimpse of what was waiting for them there. But how many of you know today there's no buts when it comes to following God's Word? we got to quit using, I would go, but... I would do, but I would get more involved in church, but the music's too loud. But Brother Hunt preaches too long. But Sunday school is boring. There's no buts when it comes to God's word, folks. God's word is yea and it's amen. Hallelujah. So they went on to say in their report. There's people there that's living powerful, and their towns are large, and they're fortified. I'm going to tell you, the world is coming against the, the house of God. The church is, is, is standing strong, because the Bible says, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. But it doesn't stop the gates of hell from knocking on your door every morning. Every Sunday, 
He's going to knock on your door and say, you need to sleep a little longer. Come on, you're going to be late anyway. What's the use in going? Come on. Your kids, they're they, they just tired. They need a rest. Uh, they need this. They need that. Uh, he's going to give you every excuse. Uh, but I come today to tell the church, uh, if I can get on my knees, if it'll work, uh, friend, we better start fighting for our, our family. We better start fighting that I want them to go to heaven uh, at all costs. Uh, you heard what the preacher said. Let's get it together. Let's get our home together. Let's get our house in order. Get it in order, church. Get it in order. Get it in order. We went there, man, it was a large town. There's giants there. Woo, they're big. We can't take this. Uh, hey, you heard. You hear what I'm telling you. They, they got children. Uh, Anax children is there. His giant children are there. We can't go against them. They're larger than us. You heard what the government said, Brother Hunter. Give in. I want everybody to hear me. I'm not giving in. I like what Sister Vesta Mangan preached this week. Uh, I ain't a stopping. That was her title. I ain't a stopping. Right. I'm not quitting preaching. If you're waiting on me to get to be a better preacher, this is it. Because this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is all I know. This is it. This is the word. I had people tell me, you need to shut it down. You need to shut it down now. I wish you'd reconsider. I wish you would make sure you know what you're doing. Friend, I done read the book. I ain't got time to get in the wilderness and get discouraged in this wilderness. I got to come out of this wilderness. I'm looking for that land called that's flowing with honey and milk. I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that land. I got to stay. But they're stronger than we are, Brother Hunt. We can't, we can't win over this. You see what it's doing. They're beating us down. We're losing people. People are leaving the church. Uh, that's okay, but look what God's bringing to the church. Can I just say this? You know, some of the greatest services that's ever happened in this church is after some of you gone. People hang around a little longer. They lingered a little longer. They say, hey, I can't. I, I mean, I've got calls. I'll be, I'll be going home myself. And I get calls and say, Brother Hunt, is it okay for us to baptize somebody right now? Well, don't wait on me. Go ahead and get them in the water. Get them baptized. And they did. Church, what are you saying, brother? I'm saying sometimes it takes some lingering around. Sometimes it takes some hanging out. Sometimes it says, give me that course one more time. Say it again, preacher. Let me hear you say the word again. Friend, I don't know about you, but I don't get tired of hearing preaching. I don't get tired of hearing worship songs. I've heard people say, man, i got to have music to make me sleep. But they can't stand in a sanctuary for 30 minutes for music. The music they got to have to let them sleep is let bang your head music, you know. And they say they can sleep with it. I have no idea. You've got to be possessed to be able to sleep with that kind of music. That's all I'm going to say. But they do. They're stronger than we are, Brother Hunt. We can't make it. The land we're traveling through, and we explored, devoured everyone there. And we, it just, it was just, it's just, we were, they were huge. You know, there were giants there. Descendants were there that, of Anak. And, and, and next to them, we felt like we were just wee, wee grasshoppers. And, and that's what we, that's what they thought too. You know, they really had it in their mind that we're just little. We can't go nowhere. But I want to tell you, church, we may be only about a 200 size membership here at the church right now. And we have about 250 if everybody shows up. But this is the thing I want to tell you today. It's not about how big we are. And it's not about how big we're going to get. But it's about how big that my God is. My God is still bigger than anything in the universe. Did you notice that the ten spies mentioned it twice in their description of the land? That there are giants in the land. They want to make sure that everybody heard the negativity. We want to make sure we hear, everybody hears what's going on, what's going wrong. And so, mu so much to that we'll find people that will want to talk to us about it. But friend, I'm here to tell you, when people start telling the negative around me, y'all know what I say? Stop it. Thank you, Sister Betsy. I hope you ain't forgot. We need to say stop it uh, because I have a God uh, that is still the winning God. We look at this present situation that exists before us. In this natural state that we're in as the current existence. And, and we focus on the situation that we're in as it is. And then we become fearful. We begin to rehearse and recite and repeat to ourselves how big it is over and over and over and over. Some of you are addicted looking on your phones every day of how much the number is up. 
How many has really got it now? And, and how, how many is really sick now? How many's died? I wonder sometimes if, you, if we don't check the obituary just to see if we're there. Make sure they didn't put us in there today. That's how depressed we get sometimes. And that's the way they were here. They begin to repeat the impossible and over and over. And before, if you keep repeating the impossible over and over, you'll never conquer it. You got to quit saying, we ain't never going to get out of this hole. We ain't never going to get out of this grave. But I got to get up. I got to get up out of this grave. I got to get up. I got to get up out of this grave, Brother John. What is a grave? It's not just a hole in the ground. A grave is something that we dig and we jump in it to, to stay away from the enemy. We're scared. Huh? But I'm coming up today to let the enemy know I'm coming up. I'm coming up out of this grave. I'm not staying in this grave. You know why, Sister Turner? Because ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Well, meet me, Jesus, meet me. Hey, I'm going to tell you, there's not a grave in this natural earth or in the ground that's going to hold me down because this old boy has done made his mind up. One day, I'm going to go see Jesus, and I'm going to lay my face on his face, and I'm going to rejoice in him forever. <laughs> Woo, I got to get out of here. But that's what the spies done over and over, begin to rehearse and repeat. Did you not hear what I said? Did you not get a hold of what I'm telling you? They begin to talk about the woes and the fears and before the nation of Israel. Do y'all understand? Guys, we can't do this. We're too small of a church to build a church that sits 500. We had about 10 banks tell us that too, didn't we? <laughs> Y'all can't do it. The numbers don't match up. But I thank God for an old Methodist lady that called me one day and said, Hey, I'm so-and-so, and I can't remember her name. You may remember, but, but I can't remember. But she said, I know what you guys are. I was an old, mission, uh, old Methodist uh, a preacher's kid, and I know how. And see, Methodists used to shout like we do and had great times like we do. And it's somewhere they lost it or dropped the ball somewhere down the road. That's why I preach it like I do, apostolics. Uh, we can't drop the ball. Come on, we got to keep doing this in 2030, 2040. If God tells you 2050, I still want to be called apostolic inside and out. But she said, hey, this is before we built the second building over here. She said, hey, she said, I know what you need. I understand the numbers. I know how small churches work. We want to finance your church. We want to help you build that church. Let me tell you, when the devil says you can't do it, you need to rear your shoulders back and say, devil, get thee behind me. For we're going to live for God. We're going to build this church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let me show you what these 10 spies represent, the masses that, you know, in, in a way, because they was the majority who always focus on the natural and the current state of the situation they were in, who, who do not have faith and do not believe anything beyond what they can see. You see, in other words, if you don't believe beyond what you can see, then you don't have faith, sir. If, if all you believe is what you see, well, Brother Hunt, you've got to have a little common sense. Get over that mess. That's not what my Bible said. My Bible says faith is a substance sub things that you can't see or the evidence things you don't see. You can't see it yet, but I'm going to lay my hands on it. I know it's true. But they didn't have faith. They didn't have belief beyond what they could see and take a hold of that which they could not see. They didn't have that kind of faith. But what did Jesus tell Thomas? He said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. I haven't seen everything yet, but I believe that God's going to heal my brother-in-law of cancer. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You ain't seen it yet. I had not seen him get the Holy Ghost yet, but I believe God's going to fill him with the Holy Ghost tonight. In fact, Jesus was giving a sermon. Watch this. this is, I'm not going to give you. I'll give you the text. You write it down. You can read it later. But, but his sermon was found on the Mount, uh, uh, on the mount there in Matthew 5. He turned everything upside down as to what was being blessed to this truly, or this, this life truly means. Is this is what it's really going to mean to you. Instead of focusing on the current, the natural, physical things of life and calling them the blessed life, Jesus went in the opposite direction. Watch what he did. Jesus said that those who are truly blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Not rich in a world that we think we, if we're not rich, we're, we're not happy. 
Friend, money is, not, is, is a long way from happiness, and I'm sure everybody here knows that. But those who mourn over the condition of sin and this world, he said, rather than pursue it, pleasures. Those who are meek and humble versus those who are boasting and prideful. Those who are merciful and kind, those who are pure in heart, not the carnal thinking of their thinking and their logic. Those who are peacemakers, not peacekeepers. Come on, we can be peacekeepers and not be peacemakers. Did you know that? How many wants to be peacemakers? How am I a peacemaker, Brother Hunt, when I step up in somebody that's all roused up and I try to bring peace instead of trying to put my two cents in? Can I tell you today, keep your two cents. Nobody wants to hear your two cents unless you're putting in a 10 cent peacemaker token. Let me hear some peace. How about, how about stepping in and say, I know they don't understand the whole thing, but guys, we need to have a little peace here. We need to look at the good side of everything. Uh, I don't know about you. Yes, I have a flat tire like I said the other day, but my other three are not flat. Praise God. Look at the good side of life. Church, we are the ones whom the peace of the Lord is to come through. How many knows today that you're the conduit? If you still have the Holy Ghost, you're not going to put stuff about people on Facebook. If you still have the Holy Ghost, you're not going to put insinuations negativity and negatory against people on Snapchat or Facebook. Amen. Yes. You notice I said if you still got the Holy Ghost because if you don't have the Holy Ghost you'll find yourself putting things you shouldn't put on Facebook. Yes. You shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, uh, negatory talk about your town or your church uh, uh, anytime that you're full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you got to find something that's good out of it uh, and start weighing on the good because I come today to tell the church uh, all of the good things outweigh the bad things. But we're the conduit from the blessings of the Lord that flows by His Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost operating within us. Our focus is to be on Him while we are here and serving Him. We are to have the mind of Christ at all times. We ought to have it a sole purpose for His coming. And we ought to be looking for His coming. We ought to be serving others. We ought to be giving to others. We ought to act out of service to people. That's what we need to be doing. So these ten spies, again, the majority gave a report. Their report says it is impossible. I'm going to ask the church one more question today. Whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you believing? Stay with me. They said it, it, couldn't, it couldn't be done. And in the middle of their belly aching, moaning and groaning and crying, their natural, physical state of things, there was another report that came in. A little voice out of the back of the tin began to yell over the vo voices. And I could hear his voice probably in the, when I began to pray for this. I wrote it in highlight letters right here in my notes. Uh, this little voice became and cried out to the people, Hey, let's go at once uh, and let's take the land. Now, I don't know about you, but I got a feeling that those two spies, Brother Bo, got to look like I get a lot of Sundays while I'm preaching. And they probably turned and looked and think, are you seriously saying, let's go ahead and have church? Are you seriously saying, let's go ahead and take these, this devil by the horns and let's fight him down to the ground? Are you serious? Do you not see what YouTube and media and, and Facebook and the county is up to? Did you not see? Church, I want to tell you, I can just see it. And I thought, whoo, my Lord, thank God for Caleb. Do I have a Caleb in the house today? Thank God for Caleb's. We can certainly conquer it, he said. The voice, like I said, belonged to Caleb, and, his, and it was Joshua standing beside his sides, and the, these two spies who saw what was really possible through their great God. It wasn't our might, but it was through their great God. They knew they had the ability to take the land. And this unlimited power and might they had, they knew God could help them as soon as Caleb cried out, let's go take the land. These other ten spies, with a louder majority, they began to talk and about the rehearsing, uh, uh, that they've been rehearsing this whole time. And, and they begin to find reason why it cannot be done. Church, we, we got to take the word, the word can't out of our vocabulary. Because all things are possible through Christ. 
Everything can be done. And as soon as these masses heard those reports of the majority of the ten spies, all of them heard it. Uh, they began to look at the natural state again that was around them. And, and they began to complain before God and, and about the situation and saying, these two want to lead us to death and to destruction. That's what he wants to do. They had already completely forgotten the fact that death and destruction was where God had just delivered them from. God just brought them out of that destruction of their life from Egypt in their minds. Uh, they're living under this command of slavery and this cruelty and having some cheap form of food and water and better than having uh, that to, uh, to step out by faith. They can just receive this cheap stuff. And, and they thought that God is bigger than any of our life circumstances and that he can do the will or anything that we, he will and he wants to do in our lives. Uh, he can do it for us. And he promised what the two were saying, but the other two were saying, I just can't get it. This is kind of like the socialistic government that we have here today. People are looking for us, what they want. Just let me, give you, let me give you some food and some water, a roof over your head, a car and a smartphone, and we'll bow down and do whatever you want us to do. Come on, that's what the world is after. That's what they want. Church, I hope you can see by now, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to live to please man. I'm not going to live and bow down to the most educated men because I'm going to tell you there's some crazy, retarded, educated men in this world. Oh, they're educated with book sense, but they don't have the book sense. Come on, you better quit listening to the people that, oh, but just because they got a thriving business and they got a big house and a big car and they got this going on, you better hear me. You better get back in the book and leave that nonsense junk alone. Listen, you better believe by now, I'm not going to bow down to another man, to another man or, or Supreme Courts. So I'm not bowing down to a cheap satisfaction of things in this world. My knees bow only to the one true God, the creation to which my Lord and Jesus Christ is He. That's the one I'm going to bow down one day and say, yes, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And so the masses here, they began to believe the report of the ten. And they began to believe the cry before God, not to God, but before God, but before, uh, but before him and against him and what his ability was able to do. In fact, the Bible says that they began to talk about stoning Caleb and Joshua. You know what the people wanted to do, Sister Turner? They wanted to shut the voice of truth and faith. Does that not sound familiar? Y'all can't sing. Y'all can go to church, but you can't sing. Y'all hear that? Come on, you can go to church, but you got, you, you got to isolate Stay separate. Only 10 can come. It started out with 10. You see, so they wanted to separate that. They wanted to shut down the voice of the truth and the faith. You know why? Because every time I shout unto God, it destroys the prince of the air territory. And his name is Satan. And I want to shout all over this place and let the devil know I'm going to destroy every territory that he's built. It's always easier to believe the reports and lies of the enemy. I'm going to show you why. When you fear creeps in and it's based on these things that are present that you can see. Rather than standing on faith and belief that which we do not see and the truth of the Word of God. But listen, church, if we are not careful, we will do the same thing as the people of Israel did in the enemy's life, in our, the enemy that's in our life and comes against us. We will begin to rehearse and talk about how bad it really is. I catch myself. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm the type of guy that, that don't mind telling you. I think it's a bunch of craziness. It's just a bunch of uh, hogwash, as my pastor would say growing up. I, and and, and I, you've heard me say it. I'm not, it's not a secret. But at times I do have to pause into my conversation. And I have to say, now I know it's real. But I'm going to tell you what that's for. That's just to appease those who are needing to be appeased. Because I'm going to tell you, it's not as real as my God. Somebody needs to give me a Baptist amen, a head shake or something. It's not as real as my God. I'm asking you today, when you need a miracle of God, whose report are you going to believe? The doctors gave me a report, Brother Hill. You're never going to walk again, son. You better go ahead and get used to everywhere you go, you're going to walk like this. 
You might as well get on disability. You'll never go to work again. You'll never have a miracle. You'll never have that in your life. Uh, you've got a body at 23 years old. You've got a body of a 65-year-old man. The very words, the report that came back to me, and guess what? Uh, he was an educated doctor that didn't know my God. He gave me his report. I could have took it and I could have ran with it. But I stood up in a church on a Wednesday night with a cast up to my leg, up to my hip bone right here. And I had to go to the doctor the next day. I said, I want y'all to help me thank God. Now, this is how crazy I am. I don't suggest you do this at home unless you've got faith. I said, I want y'all to help me thank God. The doctor says, uh, I don't have any bone in my leg, but I want to thank God. When I go to the doctor tomorrow, they're going to have to take this cast off because I believe I'm going to walk and there's a bone in my leg. <laughs> you see, some of you don't even believe this now, but it's true. I promise you. I've done said it a hundred times here at this church, and if you ain't never heard this story, it's true. I didn't believe the doctor's report. I looked at that doctor, I said, I tell you what, uh, uh, man, you got to take an x-ray. I, I feel like something major has happened in my leg. And he went and took the x-ray, he came back, and he held that x-ray up on the light. He said, my goodness, look at this. He said, there's no bone in your leg. I thought, but God, I just had the testimony. He said, but now wait. He said, that was two weeks ago. He said, this is what I took today. He hung that x-ray up. He said, you got a bone that's grew from your leg here to here. In two weeks, uh, he says, what we got to do is we got to take that cast off. And, buddy, I could have got up and danced on one leg. <laughs> Woo! And I love it when I had to look at my wife and say, I told you so. I tried to take my own cast off at home, and she locked the shed up with all the twos and saws and chisels and I mean, I, I was mad. I was, you better move. I'm going to knock that lock off that shed. You better, I got to get this thing off. And finally, she called the, back, the, 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 the warrior in. And my mom said, boy, you get back in the house. Quit acting crazy like that. But anyway, <laughs> long story short, I looked at the doctor. And I said, doctor, I got to tell you what happened. I said, the God that I serve, he put that bone back in my leg. He made it grow back in my leg. And he looks at me and says, God's power is higher than my power. And I said, you sure got that right, doc. I got to close. I know everybody needs to get out of here. I do too. I got a three-hour drive. But this word is stared in my heart to ask you once again, whose report are you going to believe? The music could come on. The God of this world was blinded, blinded their hearts, the minds of men and women, so that they cannot see the truth of God. People are getting so blind to it that they'd rather go do activities on Sunday instead of worshiping God. Truth's not there no more, the truth of God. And you hear and you receive the words of faith. They don't want to see that no more in their lives. If you always listen to what people are saying, you, you'll start rehearsing it yourself. You'll start repeating as they have, and you'll start believing their report. Oh, God. Everybody say, God, help us. God, help. Then you'll never see the miracles and the breakthrough in your life that you need, and you'll need to make it. You have, to, you have to realize you'll never see it to make it to the next level because you're believing the reports of what they're telling us. You may not remember, but your pastor stood here in 2020 and told you some things that was going to take place. I got rebuked. I'm still, even to this day, I'm getting talked about on Facebook of statements that I made. But now it's begin to unreveal things that I've said and things that I told the church. We better stand strong. Let's don't give up now. Let's keep fighting. And the more I preach it, the more I see people listening to the report of the world. I'm, I'm leaning on what they're saying. I see the numbers. I see what's happening. I know what's taking place. All of this is going on. But hear me, church. Whose report are you going to believe now? At the end of the day, God looks upon the hearts of the people. He sees those hearts who are faithful and are trusting him in his word. God works on the behalf of his people. Hear me. On the behalf of the majority who accept to believe the natural. Do y'all know the two people that made it to the promised land out of that whole group? The ones who said, we can take it now. The ones who stood and says, we can go. And who believed and knew God was going to see them through. The majority, the masses of people, they're looking for an answer. And most are looking at men for an answer. 
They're not looking for God for an answer, but they're looking for man for the answer and their hopes. That's what they're looking for. But what about you, sir? What about you, ma'am, today? Whose report will you believe? Will you listen to the media one more, one more time? The news, the rep reports, and the, and the posts that are being put up? Are they giving you the right news? What are they giving hope for you and your family? What are they telling you and your family to do? What are they asking you to do? Or will you step out by faith and you take back the land of the blessings that God has set before you? Are you going to listen to the report of the other men or women? Or are you going to listen and believe the report of the Lord? Which one? I'm asking you today, those that may be sitting at home by the way of live stream, I'm asking you whose report are you believing? I'm going to show you something, and I need to, I need to hurry. But if we believe the report of the devil long enough, we will lose our spirituality where we can't even feel God in church no more. To where it don't even matter if I go or not. Nobody misses me anyway, but that's a lie from the devil. I miss everybody that's not here today. If I, if, if I wasn't on live stream and hurt nobody's feelings, I would call them out. I could tell you who's not here by just looking at the seats. And I can see there's a hole over here. There's usually somebody sitting here. What happened? This or what, I, I could tell you. They're, they're missed. But surely every service that you miss, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely he's here to help you fight your battle. He's here to give you another report. I gave you a report today, but I want to read the last report, and I'm going to close after this, if you'll stand with me. Psalms 91 is a report that I read that I want to reread today. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely... He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with the feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror of night, now for the arrow that, fl that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destructions that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at the right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. Woo! <laughs> I believe the report that I'm reading right now. Verse 8, Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Keep behind me, plague. I'm believing the report of the Lord. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall. Oh, I, <laughs> Look out, Nick. There's an angel above you. Look out, choir. There's an angel that's flying over this place right now. There's an angel. Brother Hunt, you done lost your mind. No. No. I just believe the word of God. I believe the report of God. Watch this, verse 12. They shall bear thee in the hands unless thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the outer, the devil, he's saying here, the young lion, the dragon, shalt thou trample under my feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. I see you, Terry Hunt. I see you stressed out some days and don't know what you're going to do and who's really for you, who's against you, who's talking about you, who's right. It doesn't matter to me no more because he knows my name. Woo! He shall call upon me in verse 15 and I will answer. Yes, Lord. It's me again, Jesus. Jesus, here I am. I will be with him in trouble. In other words, I may have trouble. God's with me. Hallelujah. Well, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost right now, guys. I don't know what you feel. But I will deliver him, and I will honor him with a long life. That's right, Sister Abby, with a long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? 
I need to be saved at all costs. I know I'm a little radical for some of you, and I know I'm a little radical for people on the line, and, and I know people's got all the answers. And they can tell me everything I've done wrong today, and you done thought about telling me anyway. That's okay. Bring it on, baby. Bring it on. Because I want to tell you, I'm not going to believe that report no way. <laughs> but I'm going to believe the report of the Lord that says, Son, I'm with you. I'm going to tell you, God, don't call you and go away from you. But God called me. God said, go, son, and I'm going. I'm here to fight, and I'm here to stay. But I want to tell you, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord today that God has never left me. He said, I'll never forsake you. I'm going to be with you to the end of the world. He said, hey, I'll go with you. I believe it, Brother Landon Nance. I believe it. I believe it. So here I am with my dukes up, ready to fight whatever evil that comes against my way. Because up on this rock, God said, I'll build it. And he said, it ain't going to fight, come against it. He said, I'll help you fight. I'll take you through the river. I'll take you through the valleys. I'll take you over the mountains. Whatever I got to do is I got to believe the report of the Lord. How many wants to join here at the altar today? I want you to come on. And I want you to believe the report of the Lord in your life today. The Holy Ghost is going to minister to your family. If I were you, ma'am, I'd bring my kid to the altar. Sir, I'll bring my family and say, hey. We're going to believe the report of God. Let's sing it and worship God in His altar. Get up, Praise get God. up, get up, get up out of that grave. Come on, sing get it. Up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Oh, yes. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Pick me up. Turn me around. Place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master.
dedicating himself to the Lord today he feels the need and God is going to use him God's been working on him using him in, in the youth group and he's going to continue to use him in ministry from this day forward amen so if you would join us in worshiping and, and join Alex in worshiping and praying amen Alex if you would go ahead and get ready Alex Reyes, upon the confession of your faith and repentance toward God and in rededication of your life, I baptize you in the wonderful, mighty, saving name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You've already received the Holy Ghost, and God's going to refill you and give you a fresh blessing in Jesus' name.
Joy. 